Okay. Okay. This is the Committee on Outreach, Communications, and Appointments, Subcommittee on Outreach. It's Monday, October 7th, and I am calling the meeting to order at 9.07 a.m. So you will find an agenda for this meeting in your packet. Um, <clears throat> I have no announcements, and so I want to go first to agenda item number three, which is follow up on OCA Outreach Survey. Uh, Darcy was kind enough to upload the, uh, an Excel spreadsheet of the results into our packet for today. Um, and so I'm going to first ask her just to give us sort of an update on where things stand with this and how it went. So <coughs> we, <coughs> sorry, uh, we uh, put this survey together in um, June of this year to try to get an idea about um, what our own counselors are doing at their district meetings, how it differs, you know, what advice we might be able to give to other counselors about um, doing outreach in general uh, to the districts and um, in general to the town. And so um, we finally got everyone to respond uh, as of last month and um, uh, so we have a Google or a, now an Excel spreadsheet of um, the counselors responses to all of the questions about their own district meetings, their own office hours, uh, just to get some basic data. Um, and um, you know, it went, it went well other than the fact that it took a while to get it done. Um, but it does, you know, my questions are sort of how to, how to use it, whether we, sh we, um, well, it's already public because it's in our packet, uh, but uh, if it could be made uh, more easily accessible both to the council and to the public, just so they can get it, see the data in a um, more accessible format. Okay, thank you, and thank you uh, both for putting this together and also for hounding some of our counselors to ensure that we got uh, all 13 to complete it. And so I think that um, Darcy highlighted the two questions that I have and the two questions that I want us to talk about, um, which is one, how to present this to the council and um, the public de facto will receive it as the council receives it, um, but does it want to be presented separately? Um, and then what do we do with this information? At the very least, we want to share it with our counselors uh, so we can see what each other are doing, uh, but do we want to do something more with it? Um, and so I think those are the two questions that we should focus on for right now. Thoughts either, George or Darcy? Darcy? I think some of the questions are are um, straightforward enough so that we might be able to do like a one pager fact sheet that has just basic information on it and then refer people to this for the long form or something like that because this is pretty inaccessible mm -hmm. uh, having long narrative answers in columns on a spreadsheet that they have to click in order to get the full answer. George? I think the executive summary um, of this in a single page format would be excellent. Um, I agree with Darcy that the, the form it's in would be difficult um, and not very helpful given the time constraints that counselors work under. I think a report is a good idea, um, just briefly. Um, so if the, uh, the chair were willing to uh, but he also could just ask one of us to, uh, as members of the, of the subcommittee, to just briefly present it. Um, but I think the other question is the, and I think we should do that, and we should do that sooner rather than later. Um, 
the more, I think, more difficult and perhaps more um, important question is, well, okay, so what? Um, mm -hmm. What do we do with this? Um, I put something in the packet that, um, just because it's something I'd worked on back in April and um, sort of reflected my thinking at the time in terms of what I thought of as outreach and communication since, as we've said before, we've spent a lot of time, really almost all of our time on appointments, understandably, and we're actually the outreach and communication sub uh, committee, excuse me, um, as well. So that document was just a, just a starting point. It's just a reflection of my thinking. Um, and it seems to me that those kinds of questions or, or, or questions in that area um, would be appropriate for us to talk about um, and think about um, going forward. Um, so I guess I, what I'm saying is that there's probably a conversation we need to have as a subcommittee um, about what we see our role as and what we would then think we should be doing with the council in terms of that role. If we're just here as sort of, we could just say all we do is we just tell them twice a year who on the council, what the council's been doing in terms of outreach and communication. That could be it. And maybe that's what the rest of you uh, feel. Um, and so that would be, <coughs> excuse me, would probably be a report by the uh, chair twice a year <laughs> with a little handout saying, okay, this is what's been going on and end of discussion. Um, I think I see a more robust role for our uh, committee, but that's obviously up to, to debate and discussion. Um, at the moment, if I had to go before the council, um, other than the one-page sheet based on Darcy's work, I really don't know what I would be saying, which is kind of, I think, what you're asking. What, <laughs> what am I supposed to say? Um, and what guidance can we give you? Um, but we really haven't had a chance to talk about it. And um, so. Right, so that is uh, agenda item four, yeah. um, the role of the outreach subcommittee. Uh, so maybe it makes sense to talk about our role and then we could always circle back to this mm -hmm. and talk about once we kind of establish what our role is, how ex doing more than just reporting this will fit in. I, I can do an executive summary of this and attach it to, um, post it and then also attach it to uh, the regular OCA report for the uh, council meeting on October 21st or October 28th. Um, but I think there's a lot of useful data in here that would be interesting to actually go through and figure out more than just reporting it. But I think you're right, it has to be done for some purpose and so maybe it makes sense for us to Unless Darcy has any final comments or thoughts on this, maybe it makes sense for us to jump to the next uh, agenda item. Um, and so for that, I was happy to see George. It was a nice surprise this morning when I looked at the packet and saw George had uploaded something, <laughs> which I admit I haven't had that much time to go through because I spent this morning on town clerk stuff. Um, and so, um, but I think that it is a, 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 it is a useful document to start our conversation about what our role is. So um, to summarize what this outreach subcommittee has done so far for the purposes of reminding ourselves and also for purposes of the public on the YouTube, um, we met with the CPOs um, and had a conversation with them. Uh, we have this outreach survey that was spearheaded by Darcy and then we also were, took the lead on the bid block party uh, table and outreach there. And so those are three very different things um, that are all related. So what I'm probably gonna ask, what I'm gonna ask George to do is maybe just go through this a little bit more than you just did about what your intent was <coughs> and then we can open it up to discussion with the hope of uh, using the majority of today's meeting to define the role of this subcommittee. Thank you. I, um, as you can see from the date, this goes back to April, and that certainly is a very vivid um, uh, demonstration <laughs> of what the reality we've been living with for the past five, almost six months, um, which is that we did think about this, and we're trying to get our minds around it, and then, you know, stuff happened. So. We have been focused on appointments. So when I put this together at the time, 
Um, it was just my thoughts, and um, I divided it, as you can see, into three um, categories. And this is just a starter. This is just, a, you know, really just sitting down and putting down stuff that I thought, you know, was a good place to start. So communication, call it a communication plan. Um, it really is a communication outreach plan. Call it what you will, but that was the idea. And the first is goals, um, which is what we're trying to get clear on. And I listed four here. Um, just to get started, but this could be certainly revised and sharpened and uh, needs discussion. So goals are listed here, um, and then below that I just thought, okay, what's our toolbox? What, what is it that we, um, in theory, could um, work with? And so um, Evan has mentioned three things that we have just done recently uh, in relation to uh, uh, outreach and communication. Um, one of them is working with the CPOs which I don't think actually is here. So I think it's down below under discussion questions, I believe, um, or it should be. Um, but working with CPOs perhaps should be added to this toolbox. Um, the bid block party, I assume, would fall under what category? Um, public events, perhaps? Um, I don't know. And um, what was the third again, Evan? The block party, CPOs, and? The outreach survey. Outreach survey, OK. So anyway, then listed is what I call the toolbox, and then finally are just questions for us. I just threw them out here. Um, what is our job? Our, uh, we don't want to duplicate the role of town hall and staff. We, obviously, what's our relationship with the CPOs? Um, how do we get feedback from counselors on their own efforts? And we've, I think, made a good step in that direction. That might be the way to do it. Should we have a communications calendar? Um, maybe, again, some of this is better handled by staff. Um, we don't have staff, so there's probably a limit to what we can do there. Um, how important is it for counselors to know what everybody else is doing? I think we're going to try and address that at least initially with uh, the chair's report. Um, I think we should twice a year, and this would be the first time, I guess, when Evan uh, gives a, a brief uh, account. We should twice a year talk to the council briefly about outreach and communication efforts by the council. And I assume it is the council we're focusing on, so we're not going to be discussing outreach by other bodies, uh, insofar unless it, it intersects with us. Um, I think how do we measure effectiveness um, in terms of outreach communication? I guess the reason I think this is really important is that um, we are a new uh, form of government, and I think there's a, a fair amount of skepticism, um, healthy skepticism amongst a number of people, not all people, but certainly some, about how effective and representative this form of government uh, can be, and so I think that does put a little bit of extra pressure on us that we um, pay attention to that and, and give people a sense that we actually take it seriously. So uh, to the degree that, that our body is responsive and communicating and reaching out to the public, I think is really important. Um, the challenge is that we also have <laughs> many other things we're trying to do, so, um, but I do think it's, it's, it's something we should be paying attention to. And then I, at the end, I just mentioned uh, something I know Sarah has brought up, um, perhaps others of you have, have well. How do we reach, how do you contact hard to reach audiences? Um, and again, a number of counselors have been, I think, doing that, I think. Uh, um, and so that's what you've got. And it may be something that people need to sit down and digest and maybe add to and amend and da 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 da. Um, but that was the thinking behind it, and that's a very brief, crude description of the three part. Thank you uh, for that summary and for putting this together. Um, so maybe what makes the most sense is for us to start to try and answer these questions. Um, because I think that the goals are probably broadly agreeable, um, but the questions are more about how we actually do that. So why don't we do that? Um, you feel, you want to start with goals um, or do you want to start with the questions? Um, I, I would like to get some feedback from the two of you about whether there's something missing here or whether there's some duplication um, or whether some of this is really not appropriate. Um, In the goals? Yeah. Um, okay, we can start with goals. Yeah. Darcy? I think uh, these goals are um, good, but um, 
I think that we have a capacity issue um, as far as our ability to um, to do some of these things and, for example, to increase engagement and participation in town government. I see that as the CPO's job. Um, and I, you know, I think it would be really nice if the council had its own staff um, or if the OCA had its own staff so that we could do some of this, um, but I do think that um, the first bullet to maintain a healthy, robust, and transparent flow of information between the council and the community um, that makes sense through our district meetings and our office hours um, and some of our other things, but um, and to keep citizens informed on what the council is doing. Um, but I have a little less sense that we have the ability to do, to increase engagement and participation in town government mm -hmm. and to give citizens a sense that their voice is heard. Um, I think those things are super important, but I'm not sure this committee has the capacity to do that without staff. George? I hear you. I, I wonder if maybe part of what we can do, I mean, Darcy, you're right, we don't have the manpower, the human power to, uh, to do these things ourselves. CPOs do some of it. Uh, some of it is done by our website, so it's done by staff. Um, obviously, healthy, robust, transparent flow of information is largely handled by staff, but at the direction or uh, active uh, participation of chairs. Um, we've had a problem with, uh, with uh, our committee in terms of getting um, agendas out um, or get the, you know, getting packets out to the public before our meetings. And it's, it's not here to point finger blame because I don't think it's, that's the point. But that's a good example of where there's been a challenge and it does involve us to some degree, um, though the actual solution may have nothing to do with us. It, it has to do perhaps with staff time and, and so forth. But, um, I guess to increase engagement, participation, and give citizens a sense of voice is heard, I could imagine uh, the chair or, or one of us in a report simply uh, quickly either mentioning or listing uh, the various public forums that have been held in the past six months um, in which the public was invited to participate and we were there. Um, we do so much, we forget how much we do. Uh, we forget how much we actually have been doing this. So it's not as if I'm saying we're not doing this, we need to do this. I think in many ways we are. Um, we are, in fact, doing it. But it might be important just briefly for us to catch our breath and, and for the council to be reminded and the public to be reminded of how many public forums have been held on different topics. Um, we've met with the public on the schools. We've met with the public on 132 Northampton Road. We're looking forward to meeting with the public. Right? So letting people know this. Um, so maybe our. So you're saying rather than our um, um, doing the tasks ourselves as a committee, we keep track of what the council has done and report on it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that makes sense to me in light of the fact that we don't have staff. And I don't think that excludes <clears throat> us occasionally taking a more active role where appropriate, but I agree with you, we, we don't have the time and energy to do it. And we're not, I don't think we should be. But I uh, mentioned the, blid, uh, the bid block parties. Um, you know, there are times when, you know, we can take the lead or 
Um, but I think I guess I see our job primarily as one of oversight and gathering information, summarizing it, giving it to the council, and also occasionally as a group thinking about, okay, what's working, what isn't. So just to add sort of my two cents in on these four. So I think um, one and two. So all of these are not, to me, are not necessarily goals of the subcommittee. They're goals of OCA. Um, that, and our role is to support OCA in achieving those by doing some of the groundwork and, and providing guidance. Um, I think one and two are the ones that are most important to me, um, keeping citizens informed and having that healthy uh, flow of information between the council and the community. Um, I think we might want to try and distinguish those a little bit better, but um, but I think that's the most important one to me, especially as you know, um, I've been talking to bid block party was a really great opportunity where I met some people from District Four who said, uh, "When are you having a district meeting?" And I said, "Well, we we've, we've already had one," and they said, "Well, I didn't hear about it." And I said, "Well, how do you get information, right?" And and you know, one person said, "Well, I don't use the internet," and I thought, "Oh." Well, how do, how do you find out about a district meeting? And I think those are, those are questions that um, this group can really try to grapple with, is how do you get people to district meetings who aren't paying attention? Um, increase engagement and participation in town government, I think it depends on how we define that. So if we define that as getting more people onto town committees, uh, I agree with Darcy, I think that's a CPO role. Um, and I, I don't think we have the capacity to do that. Um, but engagement and participation in town government can be also really broadly defined. And so two things that I think, that I think of when I saw those were one, um, the bid block party, right? As we said, that was engagement in town government that was participation. It, all, all these things could have relate. Uh, the other thing um, that I'm thinking of, you know, we have, um, uh, several events that are being done by the town council um, that involve citizen engagement and participation. And I think that, you know, OCA and by extension the subcommittee should have a, a role in that. And so uh, the town council is going to be planning these um, public meetings, public forums on the, for, on the capital projects coming up in the near future. Um, and when I met with the president recently, I, I told her, you know, OCA should have a role in that. That's an outreach and engagement thing. The council is putting on meetings to engage people. Um, if there's gonna be, it sounds like there's gonna be a steering committee that puts on those meetings, an OCA member should be on that steering committee because that's part of our role. And it would make the most sense for that OCA member to be one who's on this subcommittee, which luckily is four out of five members of the full committee. Um, and so that's where I see increased engagement. It depends on how we define it. Um, and then to give citizens a sense that their voice is heard is it, uh, the least George Ryan thing I've seen on this list because it's sort of vague and undefined and provides no guidance. <laughs> um, but it, it sort of, it, 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 it relates, I think, to the first three, right? The goal of the first three is so that citizens feel like their voice is heard because they know what's going on, they're engaged, and they can communicate information. But I think that those first, those first two are very clear, and that third one could be defined so that it, it, its meaning is restricted a little bit so that it makes sense for us. Um, but I think that just those first two could take up a lot of our time. George? We've got a district meeting coming up. Um, and I guess one of the main things that I'm interested in at this and other district meetings, without necessarily explicitly saying it, though maybe I will at this meeting, is to what degree do the 30, 40, 50, however many people show up, um, feel that their voice is being heard? Um, and to what degree do they feel it isn't? To what degree do they feel that this new form of government is actually um, an improvement upon what we've had, or at least is, 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 is doing the job that they hoped it would do? Um, so I agree it's a rather broad, and, and we tr no problem taking it out, but at the other, on the other hand, I think it really is uh, something that should be at the heart of all of us in our work over the next uh, two years is at the end of the t our first term, uh, for some of us may be our only term, um, you know, I really want to feel, I hope we will feel that, that the citizens um, think that they've been heard. Um, even if the decisions made by the council are not what they would necessarily personally choose, 
they feel that their voice has been heard. So um, I have no problem with it being taken out, but at the same time, I think it's something that all of us should kind of like have um, over our desks or whatever. <laughs> and when I go to a, a, a district meeting, it's really what I'm trying to get a, a measure of. And I'm listening <clears throat> when people do say, you know, I, don't, I didn't hear about X, I don't know about Y. Um, that's concerning to me. And so reporting back <clears throat> to the council on a, on a regular basis about what we're doing, what's working, what isn't oversight um, with these things sort of in the back of our minds is what I guess I'd have in mind. So. Questions? Any further thoughts on the goals? All right, let's start answering some of these questions then. Uh, so the first one, is our job on OCA one of oversight and sharing info with counselors, or are we to be actively sponsoring and creating and organizing events? Thoughts? Darcy? I think I already said that I, I think that um, it would be nice if it were the, the, the second, uh, but I think that our capacity limits us to the first. George? And yet, um, and I agree, but I, I think that, um, A, we have done this to some degree, and we were able to manage it, and I thought we did well. And I think all three of the people here, particularly the two to my right, um, you know, stepped up, and other counselors did too. So um, we do occasionally um, actively sponsor and help organize, or at least participate directly, and, and have some kind of direct uh, connection with an event or events. So I can't say that we never do it or shouldn't do it, though I agree with Darcy that, that it's going to be limited. Um, yeah. So for me, personally, um, I think sharing info with counselors, definitely. Oversight is a tricky word um, because I'm not quite sure uh, what that, what that means in this context, but maybe I'll ask George to explain in a minute. Um, as far as actively sponsoring and creating and organizing events, again, uh, I think my thought is when there are events that are going on, I think one of the things this committee should do, and this might be an agenda item for another meeting, um, is think about what are the events that are held in town that the town council should have a presence at as the full town council. So we already did the big block party. Uh, we already did first day, are there others? There are some events like the A plus awards that um, some of us were just at where the council's not there as the council, but individual counselors are there. But what events should we be at as the full council? Um, and then for those events, and then for other events that the town council is putting on, such as these forums, such as any future open meeting of the residents under the charter. I think those are things that when they do occur, um, this committee will likely have to take an active role in not, maybe not organizing just us, um, especially as there are events that might require collaboration with the president or with another committee, um, but at least actively involved in those. So my thought is this, we wouldn't sit here and say, we're gonna, we're gonna have a forum, and OCA is gonna recommend a forum, and we're gonna do, or the organization, but for events that are happening, I think that this committee should have an active role in organizing the council's presence. You gonna be doing that, Evan? <laughs> I mean, I did, a, I did a good part of it with the block party. It was not my, uh, not my natural skill set. Uh, especially as it involved figuring out how to interact with children. Um, <laughs> but, I, but again, I do think this is, this is a committee that has four members, um, and I think that those events should be sporadic enough um, that they shouldn't require constant attention. George? I agree. I'm not, I'm not worried about that, <clears throat> really. And I think that um, when the squeals of pain and outrage come from the other members of the committee, Evan will hear them. Um, but he may be leading the chorus, actually, because he's got more than enough on his plate. So I'm not worried about that at the moment. I, um, I'm more concerned that um, we really have worked very hard for the last six, seven months. We've done a lot of outreach, a lot of communicating, a lot of meeting, 
Um, and there's no real record of this. And um, I think it would be useful for us both to summarize briefly um, what, and, 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 and list a specific, you know, but just the list, to show people, show the council first of all what they have done, show ourselves what we've done, um, and also something we can refer to when we have people who say, well, you guys don't communicate. Well, we <laughs> take a look at this. Um, and also, but oversight, Evan, your question is a good one. I, I guess it's just sort of us as a group stepping back and with these sort of broad goals in mind, looking at um, the, the meetings that have been held, the forums that have been held, the district meetings and so on, in a very broad sense, and, and sort of amongst ourselves agreeing that, you know, that this is happening and that we can give a, a brief accounting of it and um, maybe also see if there are any gaps or any, any places. Um, you know, again, for me, speaking personally, student outreach is important. I don't know that counselors are aware of the degree that, that some of us are trying to reach the student population, um, and I would like that to be something that people are at least aware of. I would certainly have encouraged people to come and, and join me, and some of you have, um, but, and I'm not alone in this. But that's something that I think often gets lost in the shuffle. Um, often when we think of public meeting, we think of, uh, you know, resident voters. Um, and that's understandable and appropriate. But we have a huge population of students. And um, so that kind of outreach, is, people should just be reminded of it, that it's going on. And maybe someone will go, well, you know, I could, I could come to that or I could, I could do something like that. Um, and I'd like to know more about what other counselors are doing with uh, hard to reach populations. Um, in my district, quite frankly, I don't see that um, just because of the nature of my district, but it, I could very well be missing something. But I think in other districts that, that you know, this is a real issue. And um, if I knew of some gatherings like this uh, ahead of time, um, or I, first of all, just know that people are doing it would be something that would be in, encouraging to me. And, and maybe uh, I might participate myself or at least uh, in, uh, let people know. So I think it's partly so counselors know what other counselors are doing, so the counselors are reminded of what we have done as a body. I like Evan's idea of kind of a list of what um, annually the council does together, <coughs> and maybe also a list of things that the council counselors attend, like the A-plus awards. There are many of these events, and it would be interesting, I think it's helpful and uh, inspiring, actually, for people to see. Um, both the, the full council events and the, uh, the ones where we go um, if we can. Then you have district meetings. I mean, there's like four or five baskets that um, we could, I would certainly help with this as well. Just fill it out and, and, and specific dates and times and events, or dates and events. Um, uh, and then going forward, we'd have a sense of what every year should happen, but also we'd have a sense of what has happened in the past and uh, remind us as we go forward that hopefully this will continue. Darcy. So a lot of that was covered um, not in great detail, not as to events that happened on specific dates, um, but it to some extent was covered in the survey. And uh, just to mention your um, the word oversight in the first bullet, um, is our job on OCA one of oversight? I guess we could just change that, as George said, to um, just keeping track, keeping track of everything that's being done, both to let the public know what's being done, but also to let each other know um, what each of us is doing so that we can compare notes. I can, I can support that. The word, the word oversight sometimes makes me nervous because I don't want us to feel as though uh, we're going to say to a counselor, you know, you're not doing enough or something like that. Um, and that's where that can get kind of tricky. Um, but yeah, I think, I think I like the idea of, I mean, we have this first outreach survey. I think one of the things we'll probably have a discussion of um, in a future meeting is whether we want to do that again, and if so, how we might expand on it. And I think one question is, you know, what are these other community events you're going to? Because you're right. I mean, I, you know, many of us were at the A-plus awards. Many of us were at the UMass Community Breakfast. Right. Many of us were at the Sammy's for the Jones Library. There are a lot of community events that counselors are going to that if you're not at that event, you won't see. But maybe it, it's nice to know that counselors are at some of these events. So um, that might be something to consider for a future survey. We could just, we could just um, 
you know, <laughs> we had the time, go back and, and list for the past six or seven months you know, what would fall into each of these baskets. And I'd be willing to help with that. Again, maybe it's just you know, we'll all run out of time and energy, mm -hmm. but um, I think it would be very helpful for people just to see what has been happening involving the council um, with the public and also with its district meetings and forums. Um, you know, we've had a forum on the budget, wasn't widely attended. That, and for, again, from the point of view of oversight, it, it, we can get rid of the term, but the idea would be we're sitting together and we're saying, okay, we're looking over what's happened the last six, seven months. One thing is nobody comes to the, uh, the budget forums, and it's understandable, and maybe that's a, uh, there's no answer to that one. But it's something to note that, you know, there's there are more counselors in the audience sometimes <laughs> than there are a public. And is that because we're not getting the word out? Is that because this is a topic that most people really aren't that interested in? Um, since it affects their, their tax bill, you think they would be interested. But um, anyway, so that's what I mean by oversight. It's just that we sit and, and sort of look at it and say, okay, what worked, what didn't? Um, why was this not attended? Um, and, and we're keeping kind of a record of it. And we're sharing that record with the council and with the public. And um, so, yeah. Okay. So, um, because we're here at 17 minutes, and I don't want us to end right as the next meeting begins. Sure. sure. Um, to give us time to maybe get some water. Um, sure. Are there any of these questions that we think, I know these other, because if we go in order, we're not going to run out of time. Um, are there any of these questions that you feel as though, either of you feel as though, we should definitely talk about now. I think to some extent, you know, biannual report to uh, council on, and to public on outreach, we've sort of discussed a little bit. We're gonna at least do this first one. Mm -hmm. uh, how to get info feedback from counselors. Uh, we have with the survey, but we could talk about that. But are there other ones that we feel like we haven't really touched on that we should? There is the issue of our relationship with CPOs and town staff. Um, okay. To what degree, I think we should meet with them uh, occasionally, not on a regular basis. Um, and this is just me thinking here out loud. Um, I think there should be some communication or contact between them and this, this subcommittee, or perhaps with them and the committee, um, at least twice a year, I think. Um, uh, they pretty much do their thing, and that's appropriate. Um, but I think we should at least be meeting with them um, once, or, once or twice a year on a regular basis to, to just talk. Okay. Scott? Yes? I don't see nods. <laughs> and, you know, I think, again, for a future meeting, but I think and Sarah may have something to weigh in on this, um, you know, how do we reach hard-to-reach audiences? Um, you know, there are whole sets of communities, the grad community up in North Amherst, uh, seniors, apartment complexes, non-English speakers, ESL community, Masani Health Center, there are kinds of places that, um, you know, we should, should be on our radar to say, you know, uh, more than they are. Um, and uh, I think that's something we should at some point talk about. And maybe some folks have ideas that, that I don't have, but um, I think part of it, and students should be mentioned in that group, really. Um, they are a very difficult audience to reach. Um, though, um, yeah. Yeah, so this is, this last question is something that I've been thinking about quite a bit, including very recently, uh, you know, Darcy and I on this past Wednesday were at Energy and Climate Action's public forum, and we got probably 15 to 17 members of the public, um, which I thought was really good, um, and I was excited about that. Uh, what I wasn't super excited about was that the were 100% white and um, older, right. and it was it was really sort of one demographic. And so, um, you know, I worked to try to get some students. I know one of the one of the one of the members of the committee is a professor that announced it to students in his classes. I sent it around to some of my colleagues to have it announced in their classes. Uh, I sent it to um, the president of the UMass Dems, the president of the UMass Art Revolution, sort of student groups that I thought would be interested. And at least at the, there was another one on Saturday and I don't know if the composition looked any different, but the one that I was at on Wednesday, uh, there, was, there were no students other than the one that's 
like a fellow for our, our committee. And, and so I started talking to uh, Adrian Terizzi, who was at the event, and I said, how do we get diverse representation at these public forums? And she said to me, honey, I've been working on that for decades. And her role as the League of Women Voters, which is also an older, whiter organization. Um, and I would love to see this committee or this subcommittee help the council figure out how to get better attendance generally, but also better representation at these meetings. But I'm not clear on what that looks like, how, do, how we actually do that. Um, and maybe that's a future conversation, but I think we'd have to first agree that that's even part of our role, or is that the role of the CPOs? Darcy? I just would add that um, I agree that we need to do a lot more work on that, but I do want to mention that the second forum of the ECAC on Saturday had uh, double the amount of attendees. Great. It had some um, youth representation and um, diversity. Uh, all, all of those things on Saturday. Great. Great. Darcy, would the youth would include college students, or were they high school students, or could you tell? High school, t to my knowledge, um, yeah. I'm not sure. There might have been college students there. Saturday was Oktoberfest, an opportunity for students to drink in a field in Hadley, so it's tough to compete sometimes. Um, do we... Do we, if sound, but I want to at least get an affirmative, do we feel like this last bullet is something that we want this committee to grapple with? I think we all agree it needs to happen, but is it something that we feel like this subcommittee should be working on? With the CPOs. <laughs> okay, so at some point, and that's a conversation for a future date, which I've said many times today. Um, we'll have to figure out what it means to work on that. Because I think that's what I've been struggling with as an individual counselor, is wanting to reach out to these audiences, um, but then recognizing that I don't necessarily know the best way to do that. Um, I think it? Stephanie Ciccarella has been working on this a lot with her yes. um, municipal vulnerability preparedness. Uh, work and um, a lot of it has to do with making sure that um, like the leadership of different organizations are involved in the decision making even if we m might not necessarily get um, renters or you know just residents in general but at least bring in, you know, the director of the survival center or the, you know, who, whomever who can then pass it on mm -hmm. uh, in some way to, um, you know, a diverse community of our residents. So, um, we have 10 minutes left. I'd, I'd like to adjourn by 9.55. Uh, are there any of these others that we feel like we should address before we close out today. George, what did you mean by a communication calendar? That's the one that keeps jumping out to me. That's probably my least favorite. Um, <laughs> but in a way, maybe it it's, expresses what we've been talking about in terms of, um, you know, a calendar of events at which counselors uh, customarily or often appear, and district meetings. So a list of, I mean, maybe in a way you could consider it um, a, a, a list of uh, meetings, both past and present, or uh, future and past, where uh, the council is involved. So on this calendar would be, say, all the public forums that will be held on the one town, one plan. On this list would be you know, various uh, meetings that counselors have uh, organized or have participated in involving the public at large, but not the full council. Um, district meetings would be on this list. I mean, in theory, in other words, it, it, but again, it, it, what value would that be? Um, I'm not sure. Um, in some, so, in a way, at a glance, people would have a sense of what's coming up. Um, and also a sense of what has past happened in the last, you know, three months or four months. 
Um, so it could be, uh, a, in theory, a convenient way to uh, uh, communicate to the council and to the public um, what the council has been doing or counselors have been doing in, in the way of outreach and communications to the public. Okay. But who would keep it um, and how would they gather the information and how would they, you know, um, this sounds like a staff task and I think the staff probably already has more than enough to do. So, um, how, how would this differ from the calendar that the town manager publishes at the end of his report? I think it would, if, if, if such a thing, if we created such a thing or someone created such a thing, it would be uh, exclusively, it would be town council focused. It would be a communications calendar of and for the council. Um, and that you might think, well, right, that's already done, but that, that's what the, the thought would be. Um, what are we doing? What have we done? And what are we doing? And what will we be doing over the next uh, three months or two months, however often the calendar goes out? Um, but I think the real challenge is who would create it and who would oversee it. I mean, that's just, it's a lot of work. Um, I think once it got up and running and once we had a sense of, of the um, fairly typical kinds of, I mean, some of these events occur every year, so they, they, they would always be on the calendar, though the dates might change slightly. Uh, some obviously would be new, depending on what counselors were doing. Um, so it would require some um, initial effort, real effort, to get it up. Um, and then hopefully maintaining it wouldn't be overly uh, burdensome. Um, so are you talking about events, town events that counselors may or may not attend? I would include them, that would be my thought. Um, so for instance, if you meet with uh, UMass Dems or if you go to, if you have a, uh, a, a meeting uh, with uh, folks in, a, in, a, in one of the uh, housing complexes or if you, uh, right, I mean, Right, that could be included, just to give people a sense of what, what counselors are out doing. So individual counselor meetings with could, some group? Certainly district meetings should be listed, um, if we could, again, right, and then um, individual or group counselor outreach attempts could be listed. I think it'd be up to the counselors themselves whether they wanted to, to submit something. Um, and we could certainly try and, and, and shake the bushes and see if you know, people would say, oh, yeah, well, I did this, and I did this, and I did this. Um, but it's, it's work, and it's, 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 we already have a thousand things to do, so. Um, I George, think George meets with twice as many groups as the rest of us, so he'd have a lot uh, of things listed. Well, uh, it's now, I, I guess I would like to encourage people to do more of that, but on the other hand, you know, there's, everybody does what they can do, and, and I'm not sure that these are all that effective, but I mean, I just think we, a part of our job is to get out there and, and wave the flag, you know. So here we are, you know ask questions, tell, tell them what we're doing, tell them how to reach us, encourage them to get engaged. Um, I focus on students because of my district. My district is 70% students, you know, and I think I have an obligation to try and, and, and work that a bit. Um, and I think Dorothy agrees with me. But we also, as you all do, have lots of other things to do, so. Um. I think this idea is something that in theory could be very useful, but the more you talk about what you're envisioning, the more it sounds like a whole lot of work. And I don't really know that it's a staff job because it's really about council stuff. And I also don't know that uh, it would have to be, some of them, you're right, are yearly events, right? The block party. But some of these other things, I mean, you'd have to be updating it like monthly or, yeah, I mean, like it'd have to be, and who decides, it, it, it sounds like a lot, the amount of work versus the utility of it might not be perfectly proportionate. And I certainly <laughs> would be willing to, to give it a try if the rest of you felt it was worth the, uh, the uh, in the long range, worth the, the, the effort. Um, and I think part of it would be done over the next uh, weeks or so because we're trying to, we are, it sounds like we are trying to come up with a list of everything that has been done and, and uh, someone could start, I could start with that and try and create a calendar and I could talk to some people in, on staff and get some ideas from them. And it would be my responsibility. If, if the subcommittee agreed that it's worth doing, I think we all agreed that it's at least worth uh, doing some kind of, of summary uh, for the first six or seven months. I think that, and I would help with that as well, but I think, it's wor I think that's worth doing. Sounds like you agree, I hope you all agree. After that, whether that turns into a calendar or whether it just becomes you know, a template for a biannual reports, 
you know, so it's six months later when Evan or whoever is in this chair uh, has to report to the Council on Outreach Communications, they at least have a model to work with. And I'm sure with Evan it would be a good one. Um, so it may just function as that, but it's possible that, that with a little work and uh, we could create a, a place where people could go, council could go, public could go, to see what the council is up to. Darcy? I guess I, I feel like it would be good to have one, and it could include um, events to which the whole council is invited, but um, I, I don't know if it makes sense to have one um, where we note every, you know, every meeting of an individual counselor unless we want to require that everyone does that because it would be weird to have three counselors participating. Yeah, um, so I think it would be cool and transparent for us. It would be kind of like the schedule of the town council. <laughs> what every one of us does, every one of our meetings. Uh, yeah, that yes, would be cool, is. but I kind of don't think that's what we're deciding to do. Um. <laughs> okay. So uh, I wanna close out this meeting. Um, what I think I'm going to attempt to do is use the feedback I got from you all today, and because we keep talking about what the role of this subcommittee is, is draw up a informal, as in does not have to go through GOL, um, OCA subcommittee charge for us. So just so we have words on paper that we can show people this is what the subcommittee does um, that I will bring forth to the next subcommittee meeting for us to vote on. Um, but it, I don't intend for this to be a formal charge that goes through GOL review, just something so we have words on paper to point out and that it would be something I would ask this committee to ad formally adopt, if that's amenable. Okay, well then with that, I am going to adjourn us at 9.59 a.m.